from the video, and it shakes it quickly, and then it brings it over to the dosing station, and it puts it in. Now, it might stop there, but it doesn't. What it does is it leaves that dosing station and goes and gets the second tone. So while that first one is dispensing, it's going to search for the second one, and it's going to put it right back into the secondary spot um, after it agitates its bit. And when that's completed, that doser will spin, and it will repeat. So remember what I said, right? The average mix in a body shop today, this one has five components, which you're going to see this thing go through five times. As it's mixing, five to eight components, it takes on average about 10 minutes for a good mixer. By the way, that's assuming they don't have to recalibrate. That's assuming they were extra focused that day. There were no mistakes. All it did was taking their time. Because some of these toners can really have a dramatic effect on color, right? You guys have been in the industry for a long time. You've seen blacks that look almost blue. You've seen blues that have a bit of red in it. What this thing will do is take away all that guesswork of and time of going back and forth. If you were up here, you'd be able to be up here in a little while. It's already on its third tone or third component, but the first two have hit it 100%. So what's happening now, right? By the way, I'm, again, I'm not a skilled technician, but imagine I was, and I started this process. What am I doing? Right now, I'm just talking to you. But I'm a painter, right? Or I'm a prepper in a body shop, and this was my job. In the past, this was my job. Now, it's his job. That's this thing's job. What am I doing? I'm painting another counter. I'm prepping another vehicle. I'm cleaning my equipment. I'm not doing this. I'm not spending any time doing this because it's going to tell me when it's done. Right? The beauty behind this thing, uh, honestly, it won't even start a mix, by the way, if it knows that one of the components doesn't have enough in it. So if you're wondering, hey, look, uh, what if one of these things doesn't have enough in it? Does it just stop in the middle of the mix? It won't even stop. It's all being measured as time goes on. Luke, is that accurate? Absolutely. It will not even let you do it. You'll have to change that toner before you start the mix. Nothing's going to slow you down. Right? So the machine breaks. Equipment breaks. It always happens, right? All these cars at one point are shot. You can still use this because those are the models, the same models that we use on our regular mixes. Because Dan Benton, Matt Bowen, and the rest of that technology and color team decided to do that in 2026, or 2016. Right? So we're trying to, we, as we did this, we thought about the things that could and likely will, because that's the way life is, go off. But so far, I've been able to use this system in shops in Europe and be able to talk to those customers that are using this product and they are no longer having their technicians do any of Their technicians are producing work. Their technicians have hands on the cars, not on the mixing machine. Not my mixing machine or anybody else's. By the way, you see the blue light? You heard that little ping? That's because it's done. And if I'm not mistaken, the average mix takes about 10 minutes in a body shop. This one took under five minutes. Four minutes and 43 seconds, I think it was. So even if you compare it to not doing it at all, the time advantage of having this do it versus a human do it could be anywhere from 15% to 100%, you decide. I actually think it's 100% because nobody's touching it. Nobody's doing anything. There is no time difference between how you used to do it and how you do it now. But that comes out, painter mixes it, stirs it, puts it in their cup, and they're back in the paint booth. 